Self-appointed champion of the region, Saint Shane Jones, says he'll ask the government to reconsider his idea of a contestable fund to help airlines breaking into the regions after Jetstar announced it's pulling the pin on unprofitable flights to small-town New Zealand. The airline's canning flights to Nelson, Napier, New Plymouth and Palmerston North from the 1st of December, saying it's lost millions on regional routes due to high fuel costs and softening demand. Regional Economic Deve- Development Minister Shane Jones says rumours of Jetstar's regional demise reached him last week, but no one approached him formally. I don't feel that there's much that the government uh, really could have done in the event that they never formally approached me for uh, any assistance whatsoever. Should they have? And would you have been able to help them? Look, we endeavoured to create uh, an aviation connectivity fund last year. And the system is that we had to get the officials to uh, generate some options and there was no appetite uh, within officialdom to put uh, Pūtia at risk. And there wasn't an appetite amongst my colleagues. They felt that uh, now was not the time to stretch the Crown balance sheet into that area. I always felt, given that we bailed out in New Zealand, we need to ensure that we've got a vibrant set of services in our regions. But hey, look, I put ideas up and occasionally they get harpooned and disappear like a balloon of air. So who harpooned this idea? Oh, well, I have to say that the Ministry of Transport, uh, were uh, they were doubting Thomas's. They felt that this was a step too far for the Crown balance sheet. And there's three other ministers who are the provincial growth ministers, Grant Robertson, Phil Twyford and David Parker. And um, obviously things that... Um, promoting don't always get accepted and that's the name of the game and we're none uh, I, of them accept that. keen we're none of them keen well they're very keen to ensure that uh, the airports remain uh, f- uh, suitable in a suitable state but um, in terms of underwriting the costs of a of, of a competing airline uh, they were not happy with that prospect so what exactly were you proposing and how much would it have cost us Uh, Look, I can't remember how many tens of millions would have gone into the contestable fund. I had in mind um, other airlines. uh, Who knows, a future government might bring that type of thinking back because it's difficult to see when you've got such a dominant player such as Air New Zealand, and especially when it's pulling out of the... Uh, our smaller uh, areas such as Kaitaia, Whanganui, parts of the Taipotini west coast and Whakatane. And I do worry as to whether or not the gap's going to be filled by tertiary players. So that was, that was the thinking behind the, uh, the concept of a contestable fund. So they would have been, what, been able to apply for some kind of subsidy? Yeah, yeah. In other countries what you do is you underwrite part of the revenue until such time they're up and running. Uh, Why do you do it? You would do it because you want to ensure connectivity and you want to create some uh, competitive pressure. I think Kiwis need to ensure that Air New Zealand uh, doesn't uh, uh, massively uh, increase the cost of travel. It is already expensive in a lot of our regional areas. They did bring some uh, cheap fares down. Uh, They're not as widely available as you might think. So So, we need to ensure that this doesn't become an opportunity for gouging. Okay, two things there. Do you need to revisit it? Because now you've just lost, well, the the competition, haven't you, to the region. So do you need to revisit a fund like the one you were talking about? Yeah, so I'm going to take the issue up with uh, the senior transport minister. That's Mr Twyford. However, I, I have to be straight up with your listeners. The reality is when the idea... Uh, was floated earlier in our reign, uh, it did not find uh, a body of support. Do you think that mm, attitude may have changed given that we're now in a different situation, aren't we? Well, the best I can do is take the issue up with Minister Twyford and and then such a matter would need to be discussed by the Finance Minister and a range of other ministers. Look, I think it's a legitimate issue. Whether or not the state needs to stretch that far, uh, that's, that's a moot point. I've got absolutely zero belief that uh, the National Party would want to go into this space. But look, I'll raise it with the other ministers, but I'm not going to push it incessantly if they feel that it is, uh, it is not a, an appropriate response. So, as champion of the regions, on your watch, connectivity to the regions just got a whole lot worse, didn't it? Well, connectivity in New Plymouth, uh, Rotorua, Napier and Palmerston North has taken a blow today. 
and the difficulty that we have is this Aussie company is going to continue to operate in our large metropolitan areas but uh, for reasons that I'll leave up to them to explain, they've decided to shrink the size of their footprint, and I'm very, very disappointed about that. Well, the reason is that they lost $20 million last year alone on those routes. They say petrol prices and a lack of demand mean um, that they can't, uh, they can't even you know, cut, a, cut even on these routes. So, well, have, have small-town New Zealand let them down in some way by not, you know, use it or lose it? Well, I do know quite a few of the flights that go into New Plymouth and Gisborne. A lot of business travellers find them inconvenient. They feel that it causes them to stay there a day or a night longer than they might have. But, hey, I'm a pro-industry politician, and I've always known that, uh, by and large, New Zealand, um, in terms of industry, is a market-orientated um, society. I gave it a good shot to create some sort of um, uh, subsidy fund that people could uh, dip into. I was unsuccessful, so it's unlikely we'll see that option on the table again before the next election. So how do you keep Air New Zealand's prices in check? You've raised that as a concern, and now the competition on those regional routes is gone. How do you do that? Well, obviously, if you find cases of egregious anti-competitive behaviour, then there's an avenue to the regulatory agencies. But I say to every listener, I say to every Kiwi uh, listening, and you have a whole host of Kiwis that listen in to you, I say that uh, you've got to back those politicians who are willing to hold to account uh, the big end of town, the corporate end of town. I, I, look, I've got a reputation for it. I do suffer in terms of popularity. But, for example, I was absolutely correct in terms of what I predicted about Simon Mooter and Spark. I told everyone that he had this vain dream that the All Blacks could be streamed via Spark. He uh, buggered off, and um, there's, a, there's a group of people left to pick up the pieces. So I know what these people are like. Yeah, but how are you holding them to account? Because you've just said, basically, you've conceded that there's, well, you've got no control over um, the situation if New Zealand, Air New Zealand decides to hike its prices in the absence of competition. You're powerless, aren't you? Well, the responsible minister is uh, Grant Robertson, and in fairness to Grant, I, very, I, I often disagree with him, but he is the senior minister, and in his view... But um, this is a is... fight you have taken on, on behalf of the regions, that you have self-appointed champion. So, you're powerless, aren't you? No, I'm not resiling from uh, the crown that's been put upon my square head, not at all. But what I'm pointing out to, to you this afternoon is that in the absence of a fund that enables other players to come into the space and continue to offer competitive pressure, other than uh, public vigilance, and if there are cases of gross uh, and egregious behaviour, then uh, whip them off to the Commerce Commission. What's your message to Air New Zealand? Well, Air New Zealand, you have great brand equity, but that brand belongs to New Zealanders, and it was the New Zealand public that bailed you out on the brink of insolvency. You have to honour your obligations, not only to the flash flights to Tokyo and the, and, and the flights to Chicago, but maintain high quality connectivity to the regions. And if you start to slip on that, you're going to, yeah, you, you're going to enjoy a copping. You're going to cop a lot of flack from my good self and possibly other players in the provinces. If it's egregious, they'll go down the regulatory route. And that's Regional Economic Development Minister Shane Jones.